So in the marketing space, yep. there are several terms related to analytics that sound really similar. And so maybe you can uh, distill the differences for us. So digital analytics, marketing analytics, web analytics, are these the same thing or are there differences? Yeah. Oh, well, they're becoming more and more, they're, they're converging. I think that's a good way to say it. Uh, I use marketing analytics as a phrase, uh, as an umbrella phrase under which everything else sits. So sometimes we'll, we'll, seg we'll segregate things by saying, oh, this is just our, for our digital presence. And, or, or this is just about the website itself. That's where the web analytics piece comes from. Mm. Or sometimes we'll say, oh, this um, is uh, the, the full view of the business, the end-to-end -end view of the business. So that'll include a company that has a digital presence, plus has stores, plus has a call center. Let's put all of that into a massive data warehouse. And, and sort of now you're beginning to get into data sets that allow you to do data science. Because some of the other data sets are so too finite, there's not sort mm -hmm. of truly sexy things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, uh, marketing analytics just sort of captures, uh, is the umbrella uh, under which all of these terms sit. And they sometimes just, in a larger company, they'll refer to teams and say, oh, this is the digital analytics team, this is the offline analytics team, this is the web analytics team. But, but unless you're like a very massive company, they'll probably have some phrase related to marketing analytics, business intelligence, and then everything sort of subsumes underneath that. Right. That's how I think about it. And marketing is just, just to say, it's the function and the purpose we're solving for. Right, um, right, right. And, and sometimes I'll say, oh, marketing analytics. And the only seg segmentation I'll make after that is brand and performance. And it's mostly because I, I, um, I want the analytics purpose or the strategy's purpose to be tied to are we solving for medium long-term outcomes or short-term outcomes? That's basically the difference to me. So the key distinction for you is more so brand versus performance. That's analytics. right. So then tell us about those. Sure, 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 yeah. So, so a lot of the, uh, it, it's an and situation, not an or. A lot of people think about or, and there'll be seg segregated departments in company. I, I tend to think of these as an and situation. And so brand marketing is, is all of the things we do to attach a collection of values, attributes to our brand. When I tell, say Apple, you think of something. Mm -hmm. When I say Chipotle, you think of something. Or uh, Lululemon, you think of something. And it's, it's the thing that's coming to your mind, that's the result of brand marketing. Right. And it's, it's really important that, that um, I sort of stretch brand marketing. Uh, some of brand marketing is due to um, advertising you run. So these pretty wonderful ads you run on TV or, or on top of taxis in New York where we're sitting today. Um, but brand marketing to me is the, is the product, it's the customer service. It is, it's sort of everything that you do as a company that creates an experience for the, for the consumer. In fact, the advertising you run makes a minority contribution to what people think about your brand. Your product probably is like 50, 60% of it. Right. Your customer service, another 20, 30% of it. Are you there when people really need you? Right. And by the way, the pretty ads you run constantly to make sure that people think a certain way about a company, that does add a little bit to it. Um, but if it's actually those things, it's, it's evoking a particular ethos uh, in, in the customer. So that's brand marketing. Performance to me, it's like, okay, we have a product or a service, and let's figure out how to put a competitive competitively differentiated value proposition in the market that allows us to sell loads of product to meet our revenue goals and profit goals for this quarter right. or next quarter. So it, it's sort of the, it's a little more science, a little less art. Um, brand is sort of the reverse of it. Uh, but the purpose of both um, is to drive revenue. It's just that brand will drive it in the medium or long term. So I, I say six to 18 months. And performance is driving uh, outcomes for you between zero and six months. So it's a very short-term view of driving revenue for us. Nice. Is it possible that the effectiveness of brand marketing is more difficult to measure than the performance one? Because I can imagine with the performance one, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but yeah. just imagining here that that might have a lot more to do with, oh, we have this campaign on Instagram, it got this many clicks, and that led downstream to this many purchases of our widget. Whereas the brand marketing, it's, it's less about uh, getting those actions in real time that are measurable, but it's more about uh, relying on the impressions and somebody seeing Lululemon in a particular way over right. time from yes. those impressions. Yeah, um, I, um, the horizon and the type of measurement you do has to be different between both in order you, for you to win those two things. Um, I'm not sure that it is particularly 
maybe a smidgen harder to do brand measurement versus performance, um, but um, they both have the unique challenges. So for brand, what you want to do is, is you're going to solve for unaided brand awareness or purchase intent. And so the measurement is all tied around, do they have the right sample? Are we asking the right people? Is it proper uh, test and control? Because uh, you, you, you don't want to do, um, there's a lot of mistakes people make there. And, we, and then we want to figure out, uh, oh, how do we do versus competition? And um, so the amount of, actually the raw size of data you'll collect in brand marketing is in kilobytes. Um, in performance marketing, you're collecting terabytes of data. Right. Um, um, and, but, but the challenge over the last five years in particular is people used to think, I'm going to dump $10 million into Google. That's all I need to do. And by the way, $50 million comes out at the other end, and that's all it, there is to it. But one of the things they figured out is influencing consumers across their entire journey means I have to be good at Google. I have to be good at Facebook. I have to be good at television. I have to do, be good at magazines. I have to do good at be everything. Mm -hmm. So performance marketing has morphed into being um, the science of optimizing the portfolio of your actions. That's where you begin to hear words like attribution. You begin to hear words like using machine learning in creative ways or, or media mix models. So um, the effective practice of performance marketing requires difficult and challenging analytics, just as it does for brand. Um, but if you're like a single channel, small business, all you do is run Facebook ads, then Facebook will give you all the analytics you need to see if you put a dollar in at one end, do $10 come out at the other end, mm -hmm. or $3 come out at the other end. Mm -hmm. That part is simple. But as you go from medium to larger size company, um, practicing sophisticated performance marketing is, is actually quite complex.